So in case you missed part one of this series, we started this Mercedes Sprinter camper van conversion by installing some windows and racks, and then gutted the interior of the van to give us a blank canvas for starting the build. Next on the agenda was cutting more holes in the van, this time for the flare space flares we'd be installing later. So in case you're not familiar with them, these flares extend the van's width, allowing most people to sleep across the van's width rather than along its length. And orienting a queen bed in this direction saves about 20 inches of floor space in the van, which is a huge amount, especially in this 144 inch wheelbase version of the Sprinter. So I cut these holes the same way as the other windows, but I did use a tip from the comments and drilled some larger holes with a hole saw at the corners, and this definitely helped when following those tight curves with the jigsaw. Oh man, what the heck did that happen? The next set of holes were in the back doors, and these were for more windows. And due to the way these van doors are built, cutting these holes from inside would have been next to impossible, and instead I drilled a series of holes around the edges where I needed to cut so I could then make the cuts from the outside of the van. After drilling, the holes had burrs, which my jigsaw would have gotten snagged on, so I hit them with a countersink bit to knock off the burrs, and then I could connect the dots with a sharpie to give me a line to cut to. And this went really smoothly, other than the fact that I had to work off of a ladder due to the height of the van. The last set of holes we needed to add were for the Max Air fans, which will be mounted on the roof of the van. We laid out the rough locations of the fans from the inside of the van, centering it along the width, and then we pulled the van outside to make the cuts since the van was so close to the ceiling in the shop. I started by drilling a hole in each corner, transferring the locations to the outside of the van, and then I traced the shape of the fan mounting bracket on the roof and cut out the hole. See if fits. It's not. Good. Exactly. I was trying not to do it. I continued on to the next hole, tracing the shape, then cutting with the jigsaw, and thankfully, this time I ended up with a tight fit, but the mounting flange did actually fit. Right. Finally, I came back with an angle grinder and enlarged that first hole a bit until the flange fit, and also hit the edges of the back window openings to clean them up. Ty and Teresia also sealed those freshly cut edges with paint using black paint so the cut edges will blend in with the windows a little better. With that, all of the major holes were cut, thankfully, so we could finally get started working on the interior of the van. The first item on the to-do list was tackling the subfloor and insulation. And we were hoping to use some Zip R sheathing for the floor in the van, but couldn't get it delivered in time. So we made a kind of DIY version using a one inch thick sheet of XPS foam and a three quarter inch sheet of radiata fine plywood. We used spray adhesive to attach the foam to the plywood, but the adhesive was eating away at the foam. So I'd recommend using something else if you go this route. That's good enough. We needed two sheets in total, and after getting them glued up, I could get the pieces cut to fit in the van. So usually this would involve a lot of really challenging scribing or making templates, but thankfully I could just use the factory floor panels we removed in part one as my templates. I started by tracing around the shape of the factory floor, and then I could start making my cuts using a combination of a track saw and a jigsaw. Also, since this floor is so thick, I could cut everything right on top of my assembly table without worrying about the jigsaw cutting into the top, as long as I laid another piece of foam down under the floor first. Once the first panel was cut, I could test fit it, and thankfully, it fit perfectly. From there, I continued cutting the rest of the floor panels, and this next piece was a little tricky since it had to span the two factory floor pieces. Thankfully, I was able to use a roller stand and clamp them together so I could trace the section that I needed. While I worked on the floor panels, Ty and Teresia worked on getting some kill mat installed, and this sound deadening material will help to reduce the noise inside the van. And they installed smaller pieces on the exterior walls of the van and then completely wrapped the wheel wells because, as you can imagine, a lot of noise comes through this area when driving. Back to the floor, the second panel fit great so I could work on the last pieces and I had to get a little creative here to maximize the plywood yield. This meant using three separate pieces for this last section, but this actually ended up working out great because there was a lot more scribing and fitting in this area since the factory floor didn't extend into this area due to the partition wall. 
After cutting the front floor liner flush with the seats, these panels fit perfectly after fitting them one by one. With the floor panels fitting well, next we can get the panels permanently attached to the floor of the van. And there are a bunch of ways to do this, but we used a combination of spray foam and construction adhesive, which seemed to work really well. I first applied the spray foam to fill in the ribbing in the metal floor, and I've seen people cut a bunch of smaller strips of foam paneling to fill in these ribs, but I figured spray foam would be a lot simpler and should perfectly fill the ribs. Next, I added a heavy bead of a foam board specific construction adhesive because, as you saw earlier, certain solvents can burn through this kind of foam. Finally, we could drop the panel in place and walk all over it to spread out the adhesive. To hold the panels in place while the adhesive cured, we grabbed some bumper plates from the shop gym, and then we could move on to the next section of floor. While I'm working, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, ready to eat meals right to your door. Great for those of us trying to eat better while juggling a busy schedule. When Factor reached out about sponsoring a video, I was super excited because my wife and I have been using Factor for the last few years and I have personally eaten hundreds of Factor meals at this point. Their meals are incredibly convenient since you don't have to cook like you do with a lot of other meal services. You just pop the meal in the microwave for a few minutes and you're good to go. Factor meals were a lifesaver after my wife and I had our second kid and allowed us to stay healthy and the meals are great for taking to my shop for lunch, eliminating meal prep. Factor meals make it super easy to hit specific nutrition goals, and they have meals for a ton of different diets, including calorie smart meals, protein plus meals with 30 plus grams of protein, and lunch to go meals that don't need to be heated up. You can choose your meals each week from 35 plus different options, plus you can easily change your order size or skip weeks if needed. If you're interested in trying Factor, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code craftedworkshop50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to work. Once all the panels were in place, we left them to cure overnight, and it was really satisfying to finally be adding something to the van rather than removing like we've been doing so far in the build. Next, Ty and Teresia worked on adding some insulation to the walls and ceiling of the van, and they went with 3M Thinsulate. And there are a bunch of options for insulating vans, including mineral wool, Havelock wool, spray foam, etc. But this thin slit was really easy to work with, and it isn't itchy like some other insulation options. To install the thin slit, they cut the roll into pieces and then use spray adhesive to attach it to the walls and ceiling of the van. And unfortunately, my camera died right as they were getting started, but here's the finished insulation. And they were able to get a double layer of thin slit in the thicker wall cavities and then a single layer on the ceiling of the van. Next, Ty and Teresa got the Swivel Shop Swivel Seat Bases installed on the front seats, which allow the seats to swivel 180 degrees. And this is great when you're hanging out in the van and gives the van a lot more seating options. They also installed a headliner shelf from Flatline Vanco, and this headliner shelf is a great addition as it adds a bunch of storage in an otherwise wasted space, and the shelf also has L-Track mounts so you could add hooks and other accessories. Finally, they added another coat of paint around the window openings to really tidy up the look of those cut edges. Next on the list was getting the bed system installed. And if you followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I've gone the DIY route in the past when building a bed in a van. And while this worked, it can definitely be challenging, especially if you want the final bed to be adjustable. But then we went to lift the platform and it interferes with the walls. On this build, we were lucky enough to use this Moab Traverse elevator bed system from Adventure Wagon. And let me tell you, this is the Rolls Royce of van bed options, as you'll see once it's installed. The first step in the installation process was attaching these steel wall bracers to the walls of the van. These wall bracers both reinforce the thin sheet metal that the walls are constructed from, and they also provide the mounting points needed for the L-Track that this whole system is built upon. The wall bracers are cut to precisely fit the contours of the van, and the first step was getting them positioned correctly, which was pretty simple with the included locating pins and sheet metal screws. After temporarily attaching two of the wall bracers, we checked the fit with the bed rail and everything seemed good, so we moved on to getting the bracers permanently attached. The bracers are attached with a combination of pop rivets and these rivet nuts, which were a new piece of hardware for me. So these rivet nuts, or riv nuts, are similar to rivets as they're compressed into place in a hole, but these rivet nuts have a threaded section inside. And they essentially take the place of a tapped threaded hole and are really ideal when working with thinner sheet metal like the walls of this fan. I drilled the holes for the rivet nuts in the openings on the wall bracers, making sure not to drill too far because then I would punch through the outside of the van. 
After the holes were drilled, I removed the wall bracers so I could deburr and seal the holes. I initially tried sealing the holes with some spray paint, but the tip was of course clogged, and I decided to just use some Total Boat Elixir enamel paint here instead, which also meant I didn't have to deal with the fumes from the spray paint. And then we could install the first of many rivet nuts. Since we'd be using these throughout the van, Ty and Teresia invested in this rivet nut setter tool, which makes easy work of installing these rivet nuts. To install the rivet nut, I first threaded it onto the end of the tool and then inserted it into the pre-drilled hole. Next, I squeeze the handles of the setter together, which compresses the rib nut in the hole. I adjusted the settings on this first hole so the tool matched the thickness of the steel, making sure the rib nut was fully compressed. After removing the tool, I could test the rivet nut with a bolt, and as expected, it threaded in perfectly. From there, we repeated the process in the rest of the holes, and then repeated the same steps to install the two wall bracers on the other side of the van. With that, the wall bracers were installed, so the bed platform was ready to be installed. But first, we wanted to get some furring strips added to the van. And these furring strips will basically act as the framing for the van and will allow us to attach the plywood wall and ceiling panels much more easily without having to drill a million holes in the van with self-tapping screws. We went with half-inch plywood for our furring strips, and I used this primed plywood from Lowe's here since it has a ton of plies versus your standard half-inch plywood, and this should make the screws hold much better, leading to more durable walls. These first strips would be mounted on top of the wall bracers, which meant the threaded holes for the L-Track, which is used to mount the bed rail, would be blocked unless I drilled holes in the furring strips. I marked the hole locations on the strips and then headed over to the drill press to drill some oversized clearance holes. I used a hole saw for this, and when I said oversized, I meant really oversized, as the last thing I wanted was to have to re-drill these holes. And I figured I was also saving a little weight in the final van too, right? Once the holes were drilled, we could get the furring strips mounted, and to mount the furring strips throughout the van, we used a combination of self-tapping screws and this Thixo epoxy adhesive from Total Boat. This stuff is insanely strong and is really easy to apply with a caulk gun, although I would definitely recommend an electric caulk gun, as this stuff is pretty hard to squeeze out by hand since it has to go through this mixing tip. I got a bead of Thixo applied to the back of the first furring strip, and then we could get it mounted to the wall bracer using the L-Track to clamp it in place. This L-Track mounts to the threaded holes in the rivet nuts, and I just started in the center and worked my way out, since the L-Track needs to be bent to conform to the curvature of the van walls. We repeated the process on the rest of the wall bracers, and the back door on the van also decided to try and murder my camera while we worked, but thankfully we saved it and could finish up the install. With the L-Track installed, we could get the bed platform installed, but first we had to figure out how this L-Track actually worked since none of us had ever used it before. Thankfully, it's really simple, and once the bolts were locked into the L-Track, the connection was rock solid. We got the bed rail mounted to the L-Track, and as you can see, with the L-Track mounted in this vertical orientation, there is a ridiculous amount of flexibility in the bed height, hence this bed system being named the elevator bed. After getting the other bed rail mounted, we could get the two telescoping bed platform panels installed. And yes, we did install them slightly incorrectly, which we fixed later. But I've got to say, this is just such a good solution to a bed platform in a van. Because these panels are telescoping, the platform can be mounted anywhere up and down the walls of the van, and the panels will expand or contract to fit the contours of the van walls. This also means you can use basically any thickness of furring strips or wall coverings and still have this bed system work. And I'll link to the specific system in the video description below in case you're interested. Of course, now that the bed was in, we needed to test it out, and it had no problem supporting my 200 plus pound body weight. Van life. So like the flare would be like here, right? Has nothing on my king bed. <laughs> you could definitely hop up. I, mean, I don't want to. But... <laughs> How's that training? Your stomach super. Wow. There you go. Not there you go. We went ahead and removed the bed panels to get them out of our way, and as you can see, this is a super simple process. Boom! With the bed system installed, we could continue on with the build, and next we got the back half of the factory floor set back in place, mostly just to get it out of our way, and it needed to be trimmed around the newly installed L-Track. From there, we got the rest of the furring strips installed throughout the van, starting with this strip by the front driver's side window. And this strip needed to be scribed to fit, and I used a carpenter's pencil I cut to about two inches long to mark out my cut. There we go. 
I made the cut off camera with a jigsaw, and after confirming the fit, we could get it installed. Once again, I added more of that Thixo epoxy, which I did on all of the furring strips, and then I attached the strips to the van with self-tapping screws. So I had purchased two different types of screws for this part of the build, and ended up going with the smaller of the two, since it didn't seem like the larger screws added much holding power at all, and the holes didn't want to countersink into this plywood as well. We continued adding more furring strips, which included vertical strips at each of the major pillars, plus horizontal strips above and below the window and flare openings. We also added strips to the ceiling ribs, and we needed to make some of these out of multiple pieces since we were starting to run out of the longer strips. Once all the longer pieces were in, we came back and filled in the smaller kind of stud sections, and filling these in made me really glad we went with furring strips here just due to the ridiculous number of holes in these factory ribs. And it would have been pretty tricky to attach the wall panels without hitting a bunch of these holes, and now we've got solid blocking pretty much everywhere we'll be adding screws. So next on the list, we need to get the van electrical system roughed in. We also need to get all of the plywood wall panels installed and the ceiling panels, and then also get these flares installed as well as these rear windows. So if you don't wanna miss those future videos, go ahead and get subscribed and ring the notification bell. Also I have links to all the tools and materials I used in this video in the video description below. And last, if you wanna support me, I sell merch. I have plans available for a lot of my woodworking projects and I have both Patreon and YouTube member setup. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next week, happy building.